If you just met somebody or started dating somebody recently and they say one of these three things, do yourself the favor and fucking run. I love seeing you guys here. Hello and welcome back to the channel. How are you? It's been a while. I hope you guys are doing well. If you guys don't know who I am, you can call me Pooch Pooch. I like to talk about anything on the internet because it's a free for all here, okay? It's free real estate. Dating, dating, dating. Let's talk about dating because if you are dating right now, you know how tough it is. And if you're not, you know how hard it is too to get into the dating market because it is ghetto in these streets. <laughs> that being said let's go on tiktok because we do have some unsolicited advice that's coming from tiktok if you've dated anyone before in the past or you're dating currently you know how hard it is and you have people giving you advice because sometimes you know you ask for the advice and sometimes you don't they kind of see what's going on in the outside dynamic of the relationship and they kind of want to butt in we're going to dive into the tea let's watch our first video go on dates go on as many dates as you possibly can figure out what you like i'll tell you why dating advice on social media always hits me in a difficult place it's because we use our experience to give advice to other people who are not us and then package it as a blanket statement for everybody and then people like definitive answers and definitive like roads and so they eat that shit up and it might be good advice for some but other people don't need to do that like dating is an art it's not a science when i heard that as a single person i got extremely anxious because i don't need to go on all these dates every single date i can to figure that out to know what i like or dislike also that's very freaking expensive like we need to level up how we do platonic friendship so we can know what types of people we like because that's uh, any good romantic relationship is built on friendship anyways so like why go through all these painful dates if i can already figure out a lot of who i like as a person aside from that some people only need to date a couple of people some people need to date several people some people not at all it's just people okay so let's talk about that i personally do not like the whole um sentence of dating as many people as possible because what that does is that that runs you through the street, girl. I'm just saying. And like he said, it's expensive. Not in this economy. We're not spending money every single time we go out. We need to learn how to save at this point you don't have to date a lot of people to know the kind of person that you're attracted to or to know the kind of characters and values that you want in another partner usually that happens from the kind of character and values that you have point in case if i am somebody that values family i most likely would want to get with somebody that values family i didn't have to date 15 people to know about that i just know it because i know that that's what i value so I'm hoping that the person I meet or that's one of the requirements that the person I meet has. Does that make sense? People telling you to go out there and date, 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 just date people, date whatever it is. I feel like those people are number one, probably don't have any direction in life, to be honest. And it's not a jab at them. I'm just being honest about it. If you're going outside and dating, dating, dating people, you probably don't have any direction in life or that is what you're trying to do. Then at that point, you're not looking for a stable relationship. You're just looking to go out and date casually. You can do those things, but don't paint it in the picture that you're looking for a relationship. And so because of that, you need to go out there and date, date, date. Don't be taking advice from these people because most likely they're giving you advice based off of their bad experiences and based off of things that haven't worked for them. And so they're telling you that you shouldn't do those things even without knowing who you are and knowing what you like. Yes, it might not have worked for them in the past, whatever the case may be, but that's not always the full story. Why did it work for them? What were their expectations? Maybe they weren't in the right mindset to want those things at that time. That that is also part of the story so they're telling you based off what they feel or no let me not say that let me say let me not say what they feel the experience is a skewed perception of the reason why that didn't work out for them i'm just saying if you just met somebody or started dating somebody recently and they say one of these three things do yourself the favor and fucking run 
One, I'm not looking for anything serious. This is not a fucking invitation for you to try to prove yourself to them that look what you're gonna be missing out and look how amazing I am and I can get any guy to want me and to be with me, blah, blah, blah. They're telling you they are going to hurt you if you continue with them. If someone is being that blatantly honest up front, trust me, you could literally be the most incredible, perfect woman or guy in the entire planet. It is not going to change somebody if they are telling you that they don't want a relationship trust me and if it is something that you do pursue that is when you need to look into yourself why are you chasing emotionally unavailable people why are you going after people is it because this is a core wound or a trauma that you have since you were a child that you have to prove yourself that you have to show your worth that you have to win somebody over are you going after somebody of unavailable because you know you're not going to get them and it's a bit safer for you start to look into that one if that's something you're going to pursue if somebody is telling you that they're not ready to be in a relationship and you end up getting into a relationship with them, they probably told you that a whole bunch of times before. Also, if someone's telling you they're not ready to be in a relationship and you are ready to be in a relationship, what are you doing? Oh, you're not ready to be in a relationship? All right, cool. Well, that's not what I want. Then I'm just going to leave. And yes, she is totally correct. I wouldn't say like run per se. I would just say like if they have already communicated that to you and then you end up doing that at the end of the day, you kind of deserve what you get because they had told you that and the thing about dating people even though sometimes they don't explicitly say i'm not ready to be in a relationship their actions tell you that they're not ready to be in a relationship some people are not just mature enough to like be upfront with you and say they don't want to be in a relationship so they kind of like go through other ways you know only calling you at certain times only like communicating with you late at night when you know they want something if you're looking for a whole commitment and they're only texting you late at night like giving you like the you up text get the fuck out of my room and play minecraft two you're just too good for me listen we all want the best everybody wants the best version of a partner so if somebody is going to tell you you're just too good to me you're too good for me and i, I don't deserve you that is also their very nice and subtle way of saying i'm going to fucking hurt you when somebody identifies a prize and something that's amazing they're not going to let that walk away unless they don't really genuinely see that person as being a prize so if somebody is going to blow hot smoke up your ass and tell you that take it as Thank you, you're right. And I will go find somebody that wants to claim how amazing I fucking am. She is totally right. She was just really passionate about that last point though. Like she was really, really passionate, which I get it. Be passionate about what you want to be passionate about, baby girl. Like no one's stopping you. Do what you got to do. I think it's really hard to kind of realize red flags about a particular individual or about any individual that you're getting into a relationship with when you are so blinded by what you believe could be the outcome of that relationship like she said like if someone says oh my god you're just too good for me someone could see that as a compliment like okay that means i'm like the perfect person for her or and like doing everything right and she just feels like i'm too good for her kind of thing the reason why most people do that it could be because of loneliness and the need to pursue something to better their situation and another reason i think is because they are blinded by what the outcome of being in a potential relationship with that person so because of that and because of like what they keep on seeing like in the future that they have with that person they ignore all the red flags like what she said because at the end of the day you really can't fault a lot of people when it comes to that honestly us as human beings we're not equipped with the capacity or with the potential to spot psychological danger i don't think we are you can disagree with me if you want let me know maybe i'm just like talking crap right now but I think because we've had like so many things that we've suffered in our past, it could be like psychological, like whatever trauma that we've had, whatever experiences that we've gone through as human beings that we're not able to actually correctly identify when somebody is manipulating us. And also because we're also human beings, there's that need for acceptance too. That's why I don't necessarily fault people that think that way, especially if you are in the relationship. If you're an outsider looking in, it's easier to kind of like spot those things. But if you are in the relationship, 
you're not just in the relationship with reasoning but there's also that emotion that's there too so at the end of the day it's like you're kind of tied down in a sense that's what i'll say number three i have learned personal experience with my ex when a guy or girl that you're dating calls every one of their exes crazy what that shows you is one they take no fucking accountability a relationship is two people it's very easy to spew that everybody is a narcissist and every guy i've dated is an asshole and everyone but what it also says is well then why are you allowing it why are you sticking around it's one thing to say hey i had one date with a guy you know i've been having one hit wonders with somebody and i'm just not connecting but when somebody says every ex of mine is crazy i learned that my ex said every one of his exes was crazy all five of them were all fucking nuts i agree i would also add that if somebody says all my exes are crazy even if they're crazy i think it should speak to the person's character more because why are you in a relationship with crazy people if you're in a relationship with crazy people then you're probably crazy too and i don't want to be associated with that I don't want no baby mama to start like knocking on my door at 3 a.m. in the morning telling me she has to see uh, Teandre. Ma'am, no. I don't know why I said the most ghetto name, honestly. I have no idea. I feel like Teandre, the, the name is ghetto. Oh my God. Most of my audience is in the U.S. and I don't want you all to like come for me. Is there even a name like that? Maybe I'm just like making stuff up for my anyways women crazies they're still crazy don't get me wrong but i think women crazies can be more predictable men crazies can be like really really dangerous if your significant other has crazy exes i think you need to reevaluate their relationship baby girl why are all his exes crazy and even if they are crazy then he probably just like crazy people and i think you need to get out you need to get out baby girl or baby boy you need to get out baby day ladies i want to give you some unsolicited dating advice if you want to meet men in real life go to where men are hear me out you may not like to work out but i do i go to the gym you can see that i'm fully covered i'm in a hoodie okay this is what i look like hold on one sec this is how i work out i barely drink water so literally men can only see my eyeballs and maybe the shape of my ass right honey when i tell you they will stop at nothing to make ridiculous conversation with me they will stop at nothing they will ask me if i'm using a bench that i'm clearly not using they try so hard to make eye contact with me black men white men white men won't say anything as much but they will literally be around me my entire workout consistently and try to make eye contact with me bop to music when i'm bopping to music they're trying to talk to me if I didn't have a man, I could spit at any of them and it would work. Do it, do it, do it. It's music. Miss, you look crazy right now. You also sound crazy, to be honest. They're asking you if you're using a bench that you're not using. Um, Maybe because you're near the bench. Have you thought about that? I've asked people if they're using something that they were not using before because they were close to it. And I was like, are you using this? And they're like, oh, no fine and then i sit my ass down and start to do my workout what what do you mean that they're male it's giving delusion also trying hard to make eye contact with you maybe they were just looking around and then you were looking around and then they caught your eyes for someone that's been going to the gym for a long time or maybe she just wants to have this in her head. I don't know. It's it's giving crazy right now, honestly. She's saying white men being around her, her entire workout. Like, ma'am, you're in a public gym. So people are going to be around you no matter what. Even if you go to the gym at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., there are people that go to the gym at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And so there are going to be people around you. No one is falling over you. No one is fawning over you. I don't just understand. People are just there to work out and go in their own way especially how the whole gym issue has blown up because we had girls and women seeking attention and filming men for just glancing at them or even glancing at where they were mind you they were wearing like skinny booty shorts and taking off their shirts and so they were filming men saying that oh my god he's being a creep he's looking at me this is that, that, that. and so now a lot of men that go to the gym are like yeah i don't know you don't talk to me 
I'm not gonna talk to you. Giving main character energy and you really are not the MC baby. She also said that men will be bopping to music when they see her bop into music. It's really giving I am the center of the world and so everybody looks at me and everybody wants to be close to me. Nobody cares. People are just going to the gym, working out and getting and going back, going back to whatever they're doing. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ooh, what do you do with the bill on the first, second or third date? What do you do with the bill on the first, second or third date? This is a question that I get asked a lot here on TikTok and from my clients. That's a great question, guys. What do you do with the bill on the first, second, or third date? Let's get her answer. A lot of what we teach is really assuming the feminine energy, and the feminine energy is a receiving energy. So what I teach is that if you desire a man to take the lead, then you're not splitting the bill on the first, second, or third date. <laughs> <laughs> she really gave us a whole trailer gave us trailer gave us a whole prologue of a movie and a whole like intro to just say the same thing oh my god i have the hiccups now ah she repeated that question like three four times and i was here thinking she was gonna say something different only to say the same exact thing you should be in your receiving feminine energy ma'am just say you want to go on dates and have people buy free food for you okay at least that's more on Honest, instead of coming here and bullshitting your way across the whole platform the first video that i watched of her i was like hmm i'm very intriguing she calls herself a self intimacy coach she's a self intimacy coach guys um talking about dating i guess being in your feminine energy whatever that is honestly let me tell you something about being feminine there are characteristics of being feminine which most women have they do have the capacity to be feminine in that way but there are different levels of femininity your femininity is not the same as my femininity because we're not the same people if there was only one rule of femininity <sighs> then we would all be equal and guess what? Not everyone will be able to eat from the pot. They're trying to sell you guys an idea and you guys are the products that you're trying to sell, if that makes sense. It's like when people create a course on how to be a millionaire, <laughs> how do you think they became a millionaire? Because they're selling that course to you. You are the product. You are what they're selling. <laughs> So they didn't become a millionaire because of they became a millionaire before they, they became a millionaire because they're they're because of they're selling you that course. And so the whole femininity and like soft life and whatever it is, is a course that people are selling and you are the receiver. You are the one that is buying that course. Okay, guys, we're going to do this together. And if you're watching this video, I want you to do it too together with me okay i'm gonna teach you a breathwork pattern that will ignite your feminine fire so you can reconnect to your creativity to your expression and to your free flowing feminine energy the breath is a womb heart pattern it's a conscious connected breath so it'll go in through your nose womb heart heart womb you are going to mentally think about the transference of the breath from your womb to your heart your heart to the womb in the sign of an infinity as the breath passes through the heart back to the womb from the womb back to the heart this will support you with more creativity more abundance and being an energetic match to your soulmate clients and your deepest desires so here's how the breath goes hand on womb hand on heart Allowing yourself to feel the energy transfer from your womb to your heart, heart to your womb. Allow your pleasure to be ignited. Allow your life force to be filled with love and allow your heart to be filled with your life force. Um, yeah, I didn't feel shit. <laughs> I didn't feel nothing. It's just breath work, just breathing. Like, I don't, how, how do you take breath to your womb and to your heart? This, these are the charlatans. This is what I'm saying. Like these people clearly don't know what it takes to be in a good relationship. And trust me, I went through her page. 
her page might be a business page, but I don't see any evidence of her being in a relationship herself. If she is, then that doesn't take away that she's still selling trash to you guys. It just kind of points to the first thing that I'm saying. You guys are taking relationship advice from people that don't even have accolades to show for themselves. Like if she's giving you all this relationship advice, why isn't herself in a relationship? Because she's selling you something. On like things like products that if they if I should sell you a product and it works, you would know that it works because it will solve the problem that you've been trying to solve. Like that's why you bought it. But what these people do, you get a dating coach, right? And I'm not saying you shouldn't get a dating coach. There are some dating coaches that have results. You get someone like her and she's teaching you about feminine breath work and which is BS, honestly. And you take the same advice that she's giving you. What happens is that you're taking that advice, even if you're like implementing it in your life, if it's not working, you're still gonna come back to her and be like okay this isn't working and that's how you turn into a forever paying customer for these people you are how they are making their money and that is why you should be careful about who you take advice from and that's what she has all over her page and i'm pretty sure that's what she has on her page i'm pretty sure that's what she's teaching to her clients too don't be taking dating advice from people online they don't know what they're saying they're trying to sell you something okay they don't know what they're saying that tiktok that they're that's going viral they getting paid from it that is all that i do have to say let me know what you all let me know what you all think in the comments if you're dating or if you're married let me know what you think too because i feel like every single thing that i'm saying makes sense but if it doesn't i still want to know don't forget to subscribe to the channel also like the video join my live i will be posting more about that later probably next week after i've kind of settled things down so if you do want to join after work we have a lot of fun there we talk and we talk all the time. Trust me, it's a lot of fun. But we also talk about serious stuff too. And if you have something that you want me to talk about, you can send it on my social media. Come on, guys. Let's, 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 let's get this going. That is all for me today. You guys have a good rest of your week. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh! Somebody! Oh! He needs some milk!